We had an article from MCV Develop Magazine talking about Star Citizen's five-year mission, its expansion of its studios, Squadron 42 development, and plans for Cloud Imperium in general. I'll link the full magazine from their website down below so you can read it too. The article explains that Cloud Imperium Games, UK's operations, are doubling in size over the next five years. That's big. That's a lot of people. Uh, in terms of money generated, they say that Star Citizen is the most successful game never to have been released. That said, I do think that some unreleased NFT and crypto games today probably have beaten it though. The article says, What continues to baffle detractors is how, without any release date in sight, Cloud Imperium Games continues to gather financial support, a significant amount of which comes from the sale of in-game ships that are either unrealized or unfinished. That's actually a pretty accurate statement. All the ships that they sell are by definition unfinished, even when they're made flyable in-game. It's an alpha. They don't have some of their major mechanics completed, um, or some parts are not finished, but all ships are true to that. Um, they're not complete. Um, and, but I suppose if you're talking about the Reclaimer, it doesn't have its salvage mechanics. It's in-game, but it, um, it doesn't have major mechanics. Um, that said, Cloud Imperium are selling less concept dreams and more straight to flyable ships and releasing more and more ships in players' hands each Water. The Star Citizen has 3.4 million player accounts. Actually, it's closer to 3.5 million now. MCV sees Star Citizen as the most extreme example of an early access title, but the player base and the funding allows it uh, to, to be that. They continue to say, this has allowed CIG to stick to its own trajectory, even if a course correction has often been necessary and a final destination seems forever distant. However, the news last November that Cloud Imperium Games' main development studio in Cheshire would be moving to Manchester's Enterprise City, site of the old Grandia Studios, with a view to expanding operations to a thousand staff within five years, seemed to suggest that while we may never know where Star Citizen will end up or what state it will be in when it gets there, we can at least put an ETA to when that might be, five years from now. If our maths is correct, that's the year 2027. We also had Carl Jones, Chief Operations Officer, I believe, at Cloud Imperium, um, saying, I think by that time we'll be operating a very large MMORPG. He went on to say, so there'll be a lot more publishing resources, a lot more games masters, more player support that may require us to open facilities in other locations. At the moment, we don't have any Asia Pacific presence and that's probably something that will have to come in the long run because if your game explodes over there then you really need to start building up teams to service that. Jones suggests that while the potential to expand the new Manchester studio beyond its 1,000 person capacity exists, the world is practically CIG's oyster. It might be Europe or US that Cloud Imperium heads to next. Cloud Imperium are increasingly resembling an online game publisher. We'll still have huge development resources because by that time we'll be developing the sequel and sequels for Squadron 42. The article also talks about Chris Roberts and Squadron 42's timeline to some extent. Chris Roberts is in the process of re-establishing himself in the UK after many years in LA. Using some of this information, the article tries to put an ETA on Squadron. They say that Chris Roberts is planning to hang up around the northwest of England in the UK um, for the next um, two years, or up to two years. And um, Carl Jones then says, I guess we'll see how long he needs to be over, but yeah, it could be one or two years more. He's spending more time over here with Squadron 42's team and with our other developers, but it'll be this year when he moves over for longer periods of time. Hopefully, that means we can progress with Squadron 42 through to completion faster. We want to get that game finished, but it will be finished when it's ready. So in regards to increasing office sizes, Carl Jones went on to say, During the pandemic, we increased to a point beyond which we have capacity for in our offices, which is why we're looking at new offices in most of our locations. Obviously, CIG isn't just developing Star Citizen. We're getting it out there to the public, we're publishing it ourselves, and there's a huge amount of people needed to deal with all of that. We know that Cloud Imperium have a 1000 studio capacity replacing the rest of their UK operations in central Manchester, opening Q1, Q2 of 2022. And obviously they've got their Frankfurt studios, they've got all this sort of expansion going on. Also, because of their main operations being in the UK, that's good for them because the UK government give big tax breaks to game companies as well. Carl continued, I think we've come back to a massive strength in this country and we're able to hire very, very experienced people. Obviously, it's a little tougher now to bring people over from Europe, but we're planning to expand in Frankfurt as well. 
We're doubling our size in Frankfurt. So yeah, all studios are growing. The whole company is growing. Cloud Imperium seem incredibly excited for their new UK premises as it is seen to be world class and it has nearby mocap facilities. It's uh, in a beautiful part of Manchester. They hope to be able to capture much talent with that studio as well. The creative and collaborative nature of the game design lends itself to people working in unique ways and sharing work in person, that sort of creative juices flowing sort of thing. Um, that said, cost and expansion um, that Cloud Imperium have incurred does cause me to have some worries. Are they over leveraged? Is the, this sort of rapid massive expansion, is it a good idea at this time? Well, Cloud Imperium think it is, and I hope it would be if they think it is. Cloud Imperium want to avoid a hard work from home culture as well. Obviously the world has changed somewhat. Um, I think they're obviously going to allow it to some extent, uh, but they want people to be at that studio sharing the creativity and getting more done. Um, they do think it sort of improves morale. Uh, Carl said, more and more studios are talking about bringing people back to collaborate. We've quite recently brought most of the Squadron 42 team back into the office in Wimslow. So that's the UK um, studio at the moment. Uh, the capacity is limited, so we couldn't bring everyone back, but it's transformed the vibe and the morale of the team. Being in an office is an essential part of Cloud Imperium's work culture, especially when it comes to establishing and maintaining morale and loyalty between staff. It does sound like Cloud Imperium are taking the opportunity to start hiring as people might want to be moving jobs or because some companies aren't going to be making it through uncertain times at the moment. It's good time to poach good staff. Um, maybe not as um, as brutal as that, but I suppose maybe it is. Uh, they do bring up the toxic work culture of Blizzard and how Cloud Imperium might want to avoid that. Um, Carl James said, before the Activision Blizzard issues were even raised, we'd started our employee resource groups and uh, we'd started programs for increasing diversity. Our staff can tell us if there's any problems and how we can deal with them. We run frequent town halls, even while we've been in the pandemic. Anyone can ask any question of the senior management and we listen. We're dedicated to doing what we can to improve it and that's all the way up to board level. It's not something you can solve overnight, um, Jones went on to say. Um, when I started out, it was an accepted norm that boys love video games. Boys like to make video games. Um, that's thankfully something that we've cast off when we became a uh, popular among more diverse audiences. The rise of casual and mobile gaming meant, thankfully, that the traditional white male dominated developer has become a thing of the past. Our audience got more diverse. I really hope that Cloud Imperium is an inclusive and welcoming company because we're doing everything we can to make sure it is. I just thought that was an interesting article and I thought I'd read the highlights and main bits for you there. Cloud Imperium, make sure you hire all the best talent that you can. I think that's the most important thing there. It's good to see the point of view from Carl Jones there um, and seeing how Cloud Imperium are sort of planning to expand um, and extremely rough plans for Squadron 42. It looks like one to two years for release for Squadron 42 Episode 1. Maybe. Probably. Uh, I do see uh, more and more articles like this though as well that are pretty warm to Star Citizen rather than cold or confrontational. But I suppose it's hard to argue with an ever-increasing player base, funding and more meat to the game each quarter. And I do think that people are realising more and more that, well, it's not feature creep, it's not vaporware when you've got enough time, money, player base um, sort of afforded to you and you're sort of employing more and more developers to make the game a reality and it's sort of is playable now, if you see what I mean. I mean, there's certainly things you can rightly criticise Star Citizen about and the, the article does a little bit, um, but um, it's uh, more and more um, looked less as a dream and a scam and much more of a, well, actually, look at what they're doing. They're, they're doing a lot and it's playable now and lots of people enjoy it. Um, so um, what do you think? Could we see Squadron 42 in the next year? Will Cloud Imperium um, be over leveraging themselves with their new studio expansions? What did you think of that article? Did you like what Carl Jones was saying? Did you like what MCV was saying? Do you think they missed out some major points? Check out the article yourself as well. I, as I said, I've linked it down below. But whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What is best in life? To crush your enemies? To see them driven before you? And to hear the lamentations of their women? No, of course not. It's NordVPN. I never saw Conan the Barbarian checking his bank balance and then watching some cool shows on Netflix, all while protecting his privacy and being super secure. To be honest, I can't even remember Conan wearing a shirt. Silly Conan. And now, a big old snake god's got your internet history. Good job. Don't be a Conan the Barbarian. Check out NordVPN. Links below for powerful discounts too.
Every month we have a ship giveaway for January 2022. It's for a Drake Cutlass Steel, a light assault dropship variant of the Cutlass, perfect for attacking Jumptown and similar narcotic processing areas. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that Star Citizen ship is comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details down below. If you would like to further support the channel, consider clicking the join button under my videos or becoming a Patreon. Comments, suggestions, likes and shares all help the channel massively too, so always feel welcome to share your opinion or feedback. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the verse.